Okay, we are one third of the way through the 2024 season here. As you can see, the AL East champs who were projected to win 103 games this year have been off to an uneven start, disappointing start, 25 and 29 through 54 games, only five games back in the East and six and a half games back in the second wild card. To start here, you might notice a hum of a lawnmower in the background. It's just the grounds crew uh, out in the ballpark here as I sit in the warehouse. Um, so to start, let's here, actually let me switch these windows here. The big story has been two things. One is a slow start by some hitters, and then two, a bunch of injuries. Um, so these are the current injuries. Connor Jones, who has our, been one of the best relievers in baseball the last two seasons, missed a month. He went out in late April, and now he's out on a rehab assignment. Alex Verdugo has been out for about two weeks and is going to miss another month. Rylan Bannon, of course, started the year on the injured list, um, and it is two weeks away from going on a rehab assignment. Ryan Mountcastle has missed about the last, uh, let's see, when he played the last on the 14th. So he's missed uh, about two weeks, and he's got another three days left, So, and then he'll go out on rehab. So he'll start, he'll in total miss about three weeks of the Major League roster. And then Byron Buxton has been out for about two weeks, and he's out for another four weeks with a strained oblique. So, you know, we've got our starting right fielder, our second baseman that we knew about that injury, starting first baseman and starting center fielder all out. And then at the same time, Adley Rutschman missed two to three weeks of the broken finger. Gunnar Henderson, that's our starting catcher, our starting shortstop, Gunnar Henderson missed two to three weeks with an injury. So you know, just a lot of injuries and, like I said, combined with some slow starts from some other guys and we kind of things have started to turn around, but with so many guys out, I think the ceiling is only so high on how much we can turn it around at this point. So again, 25 and 29, if you go to the expanded standings, our run differential, we should be 500 according to our run differential, which is minus one. Really, and then a big story is we're two and eight in extra inning games and four and 12 in one run game. So really we could, if we could turn that stuff around, it would be much better. And then only four and 11 against left-handing pitching, which I knew was gonna be a problem coming into the season. Really tried to make some adjustments. Um, the injury to Bannon really screwed up how we were aligning our infielders against lefties. It forced some some more left-handed bats into the lineup. And then further injuries have, have complicated uh, the fixes some more, the fixes that I can put into place. If we go to the info, here you can see actually 13 and 11 in May. And that's that's with a lot of the injuries. The injuries started probably like mid-April. And, uh, you know, we went 1 and 3 in March and 11 and 15, now 13 and 11. The offensive finally started to turn around. We're 12th now in the AL. I was 15th for a while. Uh, a recent surge and like one seventeen run game kind of helped there. Over here, the pitching, we're fourth in runs allowed in the AL. The starters have been very good second. Bullpen has really had a couple bad spots in the 12th in the AL. And then the... The defense has started to improve. The zone rating is really the thing that I focus most on the defense, and it's up to fifth now. I was way down in that early on. And so starting to show some improvement there. So things have started to improve some. It's, again, just I think the amount of improvement uh, with all those injuries is just uh, there's a cap there. to ha You know, 13-11 I think is really good based off of how many injuries we've had. So let's go to the lineups. There's some new faces here, obviously, with some of the injuries. We'll start by war to start, and I'll let you know how each guy ended up here. Tommy Hedman, of course, he, he was off to a great start. He was brought in in the offseason. Rutschman has missed about half the game. So he's a catcher, so he doesn't play every day either. But he's he's been quite good, a 123 runs created plus. Austin Hayes has been solid but cooled off a bit, um, but a 110 runs created plus. Kyle Isbell, who was our fifth outfitter but is really playing a lot now, He's played in a little under half the games, or started in a little under half the games, and he's got a 129 runs created plus .6 war. Drew Bowser, just 13 games and has put up .6 war and a 146 run created plus. Drew Bowser was a 2020 first-round supplemental round pick uh, in my first draft, and he, he was out of high school. And because of all the injuries, especially the injuries uh, to Bannon and Mountcastle, I needed more infielders. And he's come up and played quite well. He's not starting, but he's going to get more and more playing time with the way he's hitting. Gunnar Henderson 
Uh, has a 97 run skater plus, so about league average and 0.5 war. His fielding has not been very good. His zone rating is minus 2.1, which actually is not. It started to come up a little bit. So hopefully he can just uh, adjust to life as a major league shortstop. He got off to a hot start with the bat and then got hurt and hasn't been. He's been okay since he came back. Uh, Sandro Fabian is a right-handed hitting outfielder who I brought in in the offseason because basically. <laughs> All my AAA, good AAA outfielders were left-handed hitting, and now I've needed him with all the injuries, so he's up. Caden Grenier, of course, started as a utility guy, but he's actually playing first base because he's one of the few guys on my 40-man who can play first base. He's really a talented infielder, but he's at first base, and he's a light hitter. He's way too light of a hitter for first base to be there full-time, but with the Mount Kessel injury, that's where he's at, but Mount Kessel is back soon. And then Marchand, of course, was the Rule 5 catcher who's um, been in. He started terribly, but has been fine since then. Trevor Larnach has been one of the best hitters on the team and a really like all-star level hitter the last two years for me is off to a pretty bad start for him. 0.1 war through 51 games as a DH and a 93 runs created plus, and he's been just awful against lefties. He's a lefty batter, but he's really plummeted this season against lefties, and hopefully he can turn that around because you can't you can't have you can't be a DH is then also unplayable against uh, one, you know, a platoon DH. That's not going to work. But, you know, it's been not even two. It's been about two months, you know, and he has two to three really solid all-star level seasons under his belt. So hopefully he'll turn around. Nick Matan, he's up to one more and a 72 runs created plus and three home runs. Those three home runs all came in the last four games. And I think like seven of those RBI did too. He was at... I think about negative 0.6 war until he went on a tear about five games ago and just lit the world on fire. But he's been really bad uh, after an MVP level season in 2022 and then a uh, borderline all-star season in 2023. I think he put up four war. And then Lorenzo Cain was brought in um, when I had the injury to Verdugo after Buxton was already down. And the reason I signed him as a minor league free agent and then promoted him because I do have some decent hitting outfielders in Norfolk, but they're all left-handed. And I did try to adjust it some in the offseason in the offseason and bring in more righties, etc. And I brought in Fabian, but there were no deals where I was gonna I didn't want to trade my prospects for what I felt was a downgrade just to get more right-handed bats. So that's why I got like Reese Albert isn't up right now or Johnny Riser is because they're lefties and I struggle against lefties and I just have too too many left-handed hitters. Um, so Kane's in. He plays center field against lefties, and then he's the backup outfielder against righties. That This just happened recently, and he's only played in two games so far, or two starts. And then Zach Watson started the year with the team, and it's just hardly played uh, because he's um, he's just he's not as good. <laughs> I guess I guess the best way to put it. He's kind of the last. He's the 13th player, you know, the 13th hitter. He's just there for depth. And so, you know, as you can see, just Larnach, Matan, Grenier's playing too much. Uh, these guys are just are just not doing it. And then, you know, Hayes and Edmund have been decent. And then everybody else is a part-timer or is up because of injury or was out because of injury. So they haven't had a chance to, like, uh, you know, influence the team as much as, like, Matan and Larnach, who have played every single day almost. The Matan was close to, I was going to start scaling back his playing time even more, but he's bought himself some more time in the last few days. So that's the hitting, just injuries, and then um, Larnich and Matan being healthy and not not hitting is the story there. But, you know, Drew Bowser, Kyle Isbell, encouraging to see those guys come up and do that kind of stuff. On to the pitchers where Asa Lacey has been awesome, 1.9 war and a 3.31 ERA, 2.93 FIP. Through 11 starts, he is on pace for 5.8 war. He's been among the top three to five to ten, kind of fluctuating there in pitcher war this season. So he's just been really good. And so that's awesome. That's our first round pick, second overall in 2020. And then Herman Marquez is on pace to pitch 234 innings. He's, he's gone deep in a lot of games and on pace for 3.6 war, which is solid. He's, you know, he's, he's having a solid season. And then Jack Flaherty's put up 0.9 war. He had that bad start on opening day and then pitched really well for a while. And then it's just gotten blasted lately. If you look at his last five starts, you know, five innings, four runs, four and two thirds, six runs, earned runs, six innings, four runs, and then a, re- a sh- eight innings of shutout ball and a one nothing loss. 
and a five and a third six runs. So he's on pace for 2.8 war, which is an above average major league pitcher, but you know, 7.1, 5.3, 7.6 war is his norm. Of course, his BABIP is way up at 3.44, but his FIP is still 4.1, which is a run and a half higher than he's been running the last few years. So hopefully he can get those strikeouts up, the walks down, the home runs down. You know, I'm not all that worried about him. Uh, but it would be nice to see him. He did have a stretch, a run where he was pretty dominant, I think. If we look here, here's where the season started. So yeah, here, you know, he hasn't two runs, two runs, one run, then five, and then one run. So I guess he had that. He had a good five five start run there where he went deep into every game. But then now he's just been uneven again. So hopefully he can turn that around. He's been one of the few disappointments, I guess, on the pitching side, especially in the rotation. You know, Luis, Luis Castillo and D.L. Hall, both have, they have 0.8 and 0.7 more. Both have ERAs below four. Phipps both, both around four. For a fourth and fifth starter, they've been good. Durbin Feltman has moved into a setup role with Connor Jones out and is pitching well. Andrew Chafin is our lefty specialist. He's pitched 12 and a third innings, so he's not given up a run. He only has a 1.17 FIP, so he's been both good and... Uh, and lucky. So that has resulted in a zero ERA. J.D. Hammer, of course, has been around for a while. He's been solid in middle relief. Ty Tice just came up to uh, fill in for the Jones role. I, I, I've filtered some other guys in there, but Tice is up now and has pitched two and two-thirds. Grayson Rodriguez has been okay in long relief. He's pitched 27 innings so far, an ERA of 5.3, but the FIP is a run lower, so some bad luck there. And then Will Smith, Jordan Hicks, Archie Bradley, all kind of the... I mean, Smith was around last year and was really good in setup and has been bad. He's got a 4.56 ERA, negative 0.1 war. Jordan Hicks, the big free agent signing, one of the best relievers in baseball the last couple of years, negative 0.2 war, 5.79 ERA. And then Archie Bradley, negative 0.6 war, a 5.4 ERA, a 7.86 whip. He's not striking anybody out. He's given up 2.7 home runs per nine. You know, he's on a one-year $3 million deal. If this keeps going on, I, I, you know, I'm not going to cut a reliever over just a 13-inning sample. But at, at the same time, we've kind of put ourselves behind the eight ball with the start here. And he, I have some good relievers like Ty Tice and other guys who can come up. And when Connor Jones is back from his rehab assignment, Bradley needs to get on track or I'm, I'm going to cut him by like, I mean, maybe I'll give him another month to see how he's doing, but uh, hopefully he can turn that around. And so that's the hitting and the pitching. And let's go to, there's really not enough interesting stuff on the prospects yet. Um, and plus guys like Drew Bowser are up anyways. Oops, I didn't mean to go there. Um, let's go to the statistics for the league leaders just to see what's going on. Mejia got a 374 average. Chris Lanzilli, 17 home runs leading the way. Um, Cedric Mullins is leading the league in at-bats. Uh, Fernando Tatis is leading uh, all hitters in war, 3.2, followed by Albies, Lindor, Bregman. You know, Bobby Witt Jr., who he was drafted the same year that the O's took Rutschman. He's in the league leaders there. So a lot of names that you'd expect maybe in 2024 wouldn't be shocking if many of these names were uh, in a 2024 war leaderboard. And then on the pitching side of things, we've got Mackenzie Gore leading with three war and then Max Keller down here in seventh is Asa Lacey. Mackenzie Gore, the 1.53 ERA. That's impressive. Keller, Nix, Puck. Lizardo, Snell, Rodon, all, all guys um, that you might you might expect to see up there, and then yeah, K's per nine. I always like to look at We've got Gambo with eleven K's per nine as a starter. That's nice. Um, so that's that's kind of the uh, the gist of it. The O's, uh, you know, bullpen and hitting struggles and injuries and really struggling against lefties. I've got the draft coming up. That'll be my next update. And then I imagine the next team update will be around the All-Star break. So if things keep going this way, you might see some more changes, especially in the bullpen and maybe bringing in a right-handed bat, but hopefully it'll be healthier. All right, that's all for now.